God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce the piety and worldly passions in the present age to live lives of self control and not right to God, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he, he, he might redeem us from all the iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Now in those days the decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the very first registration taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also from the town of Nazareth of Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in manger, because there was no place for them in the end. Now in that region there were shepherds living in fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord stood before them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing good news and great joy for all the people. To you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be the sign for you, that you will find this child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And so suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven on earth, peace amongst those who he favors. And so when the angels had left them and went to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing in this sacred place which the Lord God has made known to us. And so they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, the child lying in manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who were hearing of it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary pondered these things in her heart, and the shepherds returned, glorified and praising God for all they heard and seen, as it had been told to them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful again for your mercies that have showered upon us on this day, on this occasion, on this holy night, as we remember the gift of Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that for those who feel empty, you would born and birth them anew to Jesus Christ this evening, that they might be filled with the gift of your Spirit and inspire to meet the challenges of life ahead of them. For we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You're certainly welcome to be seated this time. Once again, I am so grateful for the opportunity to be present with all of you tonight and celebrate this holy evening. And I do wish you a warm and wonderful Christmas to you and your family. But I also know this is a chaotic time because many of you still are not done with all your Christmas cookies. Some of you still have got to get the Christmas presents wrapped. Many of you are thinking right now about the list of things that you've got to do, including running from this person's house to that person's house to that person's house. I know people go to four or five different places on Christmas Day, and it gets crazy. Many of you are still thinking about the meal that you've got to make for tomorrow, making sure that everything's set, the people that you've got to call, the people that you've got to make sure you call so you don't offend them. All of these things are crazy, and they are a distraction tonight, and they take us away from being here. Some of you others, I guarantee you, some of you are saying, oh my goodness, I'm only here tonight because my spouse made me come. Am I right? There's a handful of you here tonight, and that's a distraction because you've got better things you want to be at, maybe like watching one of the football games and so on. Right? Am I right? Come on, somebody can say, yeah, that's right. I get it. Thank you, Lori. You know, it reminds me, it reminds me of the story of a pastor who, uh, a young couple that came to church, well, actually, the woman did, and finally she dragged her husband to church, 
And the husband came out from receiving line and said, Pastor, I guess we're going to join the congregation. He said, oh, really? That's exciting. Of course, the husband was feeling a little bit picked upon me, dragged to church that Sunday. He said, yeah, we're going to join. He said, oh, the pastor, that's just great, the pastor said. From what congregation are you transfer, uh, transferring? To which the husband said, community golf course. <laughs> like to be and things that you'd rather do. But I want to make sure, if this is your one and only opportunity here today, that you are blessed with something special that will touch you for an eternity that you will never forget. And I'm hoping I can fulfill that by proclaiming to you the good news of what God wants to do for you tonight. And so I know there are many distractions. I know there are many fears. I know that you have many distractions tonight. Some of you are afraid about what's to come in your future, about your financial situation, about your job situation, about your families. Many of you are distracted by the politics of what's going on in our country and in the world, about the concerns, about violence that's taking place all over the place, not just over there in France, but also in our country, maybe even your own households. But the worst thing that's happening tonight is inside of a lot of you, you're coming with your own fears because you're concerned that maybe you're just not good enough. Maybe you just don't measure up. Maybe you're afraid you're going to wake up tomorrow and people are going to think you're a fraud. But I've got some good news for you tonight because this is what I want you to hear. Tonight, not quite yet, because tonight I'm going to tell you something that maybe nobody else has ever told you. I believe in you and every single person here. I want to make sure I look at every single person in the eyes because I want you to know I believe in you and in all of you, every single one of you. I believe that God has made you for something spectacular, for something special. I think God has touched you with his hand. I think God has made you for a purpose, and I think God is going to do something amazing through you. How do I know this? Because the Bible tells me so. That's it. And I'm going to tell you tonight what the Bible tells you about how God sees you. You are so distracted by what the world wants you to hear about you, how you've fallen short, how you fail, how your rails have come out of your, off your life. But God has a different record that he wants to play for you tonight. And so I'm inviting you to take in your hand, out your handouts, there's a handout in your bulletin that says what God says about you. We are going to put it up on the screen. I guarantee you won't be able to see it. As I viewed it earlier, right before the service, I realized it's way too small. We printed it out so you can read this. I want you to take this home tonight. I want you to put it beside your bed. I want you to feast on this because I guarantee you what I'm going to tell you right now is significantly more rich than anything that's going to be on the plate that you feast on tomorrow for Christmas dinner. This will make you fat in our Lord. I bet you never heard that one before. It's going to make you fat in God, okay? You're going to be so filled with the presence of God because this is what God wants you to know about who you are. You can go ahead and put up that screen there for the very first one. The very first thing that God wants you to know is that you, I got to cheat a little bit here, hope you don't mind, that first thing, you were created in the image of God. It says so in the Bible that God created humankind in his own image, in the image of God he created them, both male and female he created them. So next time somebody comes up to you and says, oh, you're just stupid, oh, you're an idiot, oh, you're not good enough, maybe that's a record that you've heard all of your life and you keep saying in your brain, this is how you're going to fight that. You're going to read this verse and you're going to realize, I'm the image of God. God has never made a stupid person. God has never made an idiot. God has never made a person who is worthless. And God certainly didn't start that with you. You are the image of God. You are beautiful in His sight. Don't you ever forget that. Replace that record with this. 
The second thing that God says, look at number two that God says about you, that God would rather die for you than live without you. How amazing is that? God would rather, oh, I'm sorry, skipping ahead, skipping, skipping ahead, number three, that God loves you, number two, so much that God stooped into the world and said, I love you. Do you understand that that's what this baby Jesus is all about? This is God's message of love and forgiveness, and he is not just a messenger. You see, there are a lot of liberal pastors who believe, oh, Jesus is just a nice guy. He just had a lot of nice things to say. He brought a message of God's love. Jesus didn't just bring a message of God's love. I'm hoping to bring a message of God's love tonight. I'm hoping that Dr. Martin Luther King brought a message of God's love. I'm hoping Joel Osteen brings a message of God's love tonight. But we're just messengers. We're just messenger boys. Jesus is God's love. God loved you so much that he stooped into this world to say so. Listen to this in the promise of Scripture. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling place amongst us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. The Word has been birthed amongst us, so that you might be told by the Almighty God, I love you. Oh, but we're not done. If that's not enough, that baby Jesus didn't stay a little baby. That baby Jesus grew up to be a young man who was willing to die for us. You see, because number three, God would rather die for us than live without us. Look at John 3, 15, or 16 to 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Oh, see, you go to a football game, that's all you see, John 3, 16. I think anybody holds up John 3, 16. Pass it on and be slapped in the head because God put verse 17 down. I think it's the most important verse. Look at this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Remember how God didn't make any junk? Well, we make a mess of our life, and that may be true, but God said, I am going to redeem you because you are so much more important to me than anything else, even God's own life. That he, was, that he was willing to give it so he might have a relationship with you. Oh, we're not done. I got four more. How cool is this? Keep going. I hope you're feeling blessed. Here's number four. God blesses you with a part of himself, the gift of the Holy Spirit, to help guide you, to direct you, to help you through the challenges that you face in life. Because I guarantee you, there are times in your life that you just don't know the direction that you need to go in. But God has promised to bless you with the power of the Holy Spirit. When we talk about God being inside of us, I feel God really near to me. We are talking about that part of God that we call the Holy Spirit. And God has promised to be inside every single one of us. That's something that Jesus made possible. In the Old Testament, it was only an occasional leader and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But because of what Jesus has done for us, every single person who calls upon the name of Jesus Christ has the gift of the Holy Spirit. So you have a lot of churches who ask you, do you have the Holy Spirit? Are you a Christian? Yeah, you do. The Spirit has been born inside of you. Listen to what the, the Scripture says about the Holy Spirit today. These are the things that God has revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God, for who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them. In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit is from God, so that we may understand that God has freely given us. This is what we speak. Not words taught us by human wisdom, but words taught by the Spirit. Explaining spiritualities, spiritually, spirit taught words. You have a school teacher in your heart named the Holy Spirit who will guide you and direct you and show you the way, which leads to number five. You do not go anywhere in life alone. Have you ever been at the end of your road where you are just in tears? And you don't think there's anybody in the world that cares for you. And I'm going to tell you what. There may come a day where nobody cares about you in this world. 
There are people in this world who come to the end of the rope. There's nobody left. They're surrounded by nothing but enemies and any but the people who hate them. But even if you reach that end, when you feel like there's nothing or nobody left who cares for you, there is one who promises to be with you. And that's God. Listen to this. Surely, Jesus says, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is a promise that God's made to you. You will never be alone no matter how dire the circumstances of your life may be. Whenever all you have at nighttime is your weeping and your tears, God is sitting with you and weeping with you. Number six, you are created for a purpose. You have a unique combination of gifts and abilities that the world and others may desperately need. Now, I may be too foolish to understand what your gifts and your abilities are. I may not know what they are. I may not even understand your purpose. But it's not my job to understand what everybody's purpose is. I know that God has given you a unique uh, swirl of skills and abilities, unique only to you. And you've been placed here on this earth for a purpose. Don't ever believe what the world wants to tell you that you're worthless. You are not worthless. You are here for a reason. Listen to what God says about this. For we are God's handiwork, created in Jesus Christ to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You guys feel really uplifted, I hope, because I got one more. One more. And this one's so cool. Hey, you ready for this? All of us have lost people who we love very dearly. All of us have lost people who we just feel like our, our lives have been ripped asunder. And I guarantee you, every single person here right now is thinking of somebody who they miss. Am I right? I am. I want you to keep that person in your mind because here's the promise that God makes. Because when life is done, oh, life isn't done. It's only beginning. You hear that? When life is done, it isn't done. It's only just beginning. Because look at the promise that God has given us. We have a place with God and all of our loved ones in that church realm. And you are an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven because of Jesus Christ. Now, think about that. You have stake. You have property. You have ownership in the kingdom of heaven because of the gift of Jesus Christ. Not but your loved ones who have placed their lives in the care of Jesus Christ. You will meet the man because that's the promise of God. And you can take that one to the back. Listen to this. God raised us up with Jesus Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ. I bet you don't, you don't think you deserve that, do you? I'm going to sit by Jesus? Yeah. He would be so proud to have you sit at his right hand. Because he loves it. Listen to this. He seats you there in the heaven realms of Jesus Christ in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, express his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. For it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Not of yourselves, but it is a gift of God. I hope you're feeling so much better right now. Because here's the good news. Maybe it seems like the wheels have fallen off your life. Maybe you've been crippled by fears and anxieties. But here's the good news. God is a God of first chances and second chances and third chances and fifth chances and 25 chances and 100 chances. Don't ever say to yourself, oh, I fail so often. I'm just not worthy of it. There are no failures that disqualify you from the love of God. I want you to hear that again. There are no failures that disqualify you from the love of God. There's no direction in which you've gone that cannot be forgiven or corrected. No mistakes that you have committed that cannot be amended or forgiven. There's no such thing as being too late to the party. And oh, by the way, for those of you who thought the roof was going to cave in when you came here tonight, it didn't happen. Because that's not the way God is. God is not sitting up in heaven waiting to push you down a slippery slope. God is waiting to welcome you home 
And in fact, he didn't, I should qualify, he didn't just wait for you. He came down to bring you home. Even better. Why? Because I'm dumb. Even GPS, I get lost. But as long as the Holy Spirit is guiding me, I can make sure I will make it to him. Contrary to that view of God that you may have, God is not an over, he's not up to get you. He's your biggest fan tonight. And this baby, this baby that we celebrate today, he came to tell you a special word. I love you, I believe in you, and I chose you. I'm going to ask you 